So what we have here is probably one of the most unique computers I've ever owned and this is my first computer related video so yay me. <laughs> so this is an IBM ThinkPad 730T and I cannot find any specifications on this thing. Literally, I mean, I found a lot of, I scoured everywhere on the internet and I found a lot of specifications for its younger brother the 730TE, which has a 486SX processor and 8 megabytes of RAM and runs Windows. Uh, I forgot, I think it was running Windows 95. Well, this one, I believe, has a 386 and it's currently running Windows 95, so I'm sure it was upgraded to it. And uh, this was given to me by my pastor, and as you can see, it's entirely a pen, stylus-operated computer. It's pretty thick, to say the least, but, yeah. So right here, we have two batteries. Neither of them will charge, so that pretty much sums that up. On the top here, I can't get it really turned that good, because it's plugged in. Right there is the docking port and right beside it is the 15 volt in adapter runs off of 15 volts and uh, I'm not sure how many amps I don't I can't readily grab the power supply so right here's the PCMIA slot the latch to the door is broken and this is one thing unique about it I mean I'm sure that handheld computers might have done this back in the day but I've never seen one do it once again the hard drive plugs into the PCMIA slot and then through there is what the computer boots off of. So it's a 105 megabyte drive, IBM drive, model 8105PA, made in Singapore. So, oh, uh oh, dropped it. <laughs> Good thing I didn't damage it too much. On um, right here, we have what was in it when I got it, a megahertz dial-up adapter with a little pop-out phone line connector. Pretty neat. So this thing obviously used dial-up. And then in this slot right here, we have an IBM card of 8 megabytes of DRAM. So if I'm correct about the TE and this one may have been upgraded because this is just a basic T. And uh, the copyright date on the back says 1993. So this computer is from the wonderful period of 1993. And then last of all on that right there is where the stylus is held. at the original IBM stylus. And it just goes in right there. And then when you want to eject it, you press the button, pops out, and then you grab it. So that's more or less all there is to the back side. So on the front side, it usually runs widescreen like this, even though I'm sure there's some driver or program in Windows 95 that helps it do on um, portrait display trust me this video is not off the script so that's why I keep saying a lot of uhs but um, on the front screen here we have the volume buttons the contrast buttons a button to turn the backlight on and off I'll kind of have to explain that when I turn this thing on and standby button and it's in standby right now you can press that to put it in standby, but to actually get it out of standby, you have to press the power button. The power button is right there, and then right there's the status button. There's for the power, both the batteries and the hard drive status. And before I forget it, here's the dock. There is the connector that goes on the top side of the computer, and then on the other side, we have some type of proprietary thing. I can't really tell what it is. 
a VGA out. I've already used it with a VGA monitor and it displays just fine. Printer port and a serial port. And basically this thing has almost all the capabilities of a regular computer but in a tablet form. So it's in standby right now so we're going to take it out of standby. Sometimes you got to hold the button down a little bit. Okay, there we go. So the screen is a black and white fluorescent backlighted monochrome screen. And I thought it was in standby. It's completely booting up. Or maybe it's going in system resume. But it is black and white. And if you don't have internet, the best this thing can do is probably a Microsoft Paint device. Which I'm sure that it wouldn't make a very bad little tablet interneting device if you had a wireless card in it. I don't know. So it is now booting to Windows 95. I'm very surprised with how good it's showing on the camera. And then once it beeps, and that's when you know it's about to go into Windows. It takes a long time to boot. I can't really tell. And I guess this computer is good for some people and some not. I mean, I don't particularly like it. I wouldn't use it as a regular computer. But I go to a very, very, very small Christian school. Only about seven of us. And I took it today just to show it off. And a friend of mine used it. And she spent about the whole entire 30 minute break drawing stuff on paint. So I guess some people like it and some people don't. So here's the stylus. One little thing. I don't know if it's supposed to do this or not supposed to do this. But if you hover it, the stylus above the screen, the cursor will still follow it. You can do like that or hover it above the screen. And it will still follow you when it's about that far above the screen. That's probably about a centimeter and a half maybe actually. Or no? Going a bit higher. Look at that, it's still following it. Okay. So when it's about that high off the screen, maybe half an inch, three quarters of an inch maybe, that's when the screen stops responding to it. As you can see here, we got ourselves a little on-screen keyboard. Enter our password. Okay. And log in. And here we go. So this computer is just basically running Windows 95. It's pretty much a bare bones installation. I don't, I can't even find Internet Explorer anywhere on here. But one thing it does have installed on it, and one thing I completely laughed my butt off about when I first powered this thing up, it has America Online on it. America Online would be freaking do and you know that this is from the age when people were first starting to get computers and didn't have a very good knowledge of them because the icon says double click to start but the program does still work and I just for nostalgia purposes very ridiculous nostalgia purposes I am NOT going to uninstall it so maybe one day when I'm a grandfather I can Pull this thing out and show it to my grandkids. Grandpa, what is that? That's a mechanical hard drive. Grandpa, what is that? America Online. What does that do? It connects to dial-up internet. What is dial-up? Technology changes so fast over the years. I don't even think my, my littlest sister, who's... She just turned seven. I don't even know if she knows what dial-up is. When I was her age, we did have dial-up, and then when I turned about nine, we switched over. So. so it takes forever for it to start for some reason. And like I said, I couldn't explain what this button does. That's pretty much what it does. It's like a weird reading mode. I wonder which one the camera gets better. Yeah. It gets both just as good. As you can see here, you can try to sign on 
and the dial-up modem will actually attempt to dial it and then it'll give you an error message saying there's no dial tone because of course it's not connected to the phone line at the moment so that's pretty much all there is to it just gonna cancel out and it won't let me do anything there it goes the modem has reported there's no dial tone user cancel connection process okay go away you go away too and now you go away Okay, I guess we can go into MS Paint. I mean, that's one of the best things about having a pen computer. Paint. Man, I really need some oil on this chair. See, you can use paint. So, here we have a bunch of scriggly lines. Tom's lab. This thing has handwriting recognition. I forgot to mention that, which basically all of them do. A zones cab. Are we dealing with another Apple Newton? Okay, okay. Well, let's try that again. How do I delete this? And let's draw my logo again. Tom's Lab. See what's so unnoticeable about my handwriting? Like, why can't it detect that? Let's draw my little lightning bolt. Yeah, lightning bolt. Tom's Lab. Yeah. Super cool. Excellent. Yeah. Let's draw a little. Let's see here. Made with I B M. <laughs> you know, this one make a bad drawing tablet. I wonder if you can modify these to be a drawing tablet. Or maybe just draw what you want to draw. Be really careful with your colors because it's only black and white. Make sure you got the right color. And then just upload it to a regular computer. I guess, you know, one with actual color display. I'm just kidding. If you display it through VGA, it shows in perfect color. Uh, okay, well, let's save that. Save. We'll save it as master piece it'll work okay let's save that mess son hey look at that perfect wallpaper i'm gonna keep it at that yeah and now we can send masterpiece to the recycle bin let's empty our recycle bin there's another masterpiece file Tried to make that file earlier actually. It didn't turn out so well. Okay, so we'll delete those. Yes. So now we've successfully emptied the recycle bin. Let's see what else is on here. Let's see your accessories, games. Who's up for a little solitaire? Hey, this is pretty cool. Solitaire machine. Uh, let's see, we need to find a jag. Hard to tell the colors though, because it's in black and white. Just saying. Where's that jag? Oh, it's under there. Okay, so five goes there. Oh. Jag. Nope, didn't like that. Uh, two. Hey. Three. Ooh. Like my cousin Jonathan says. I got a GoPro camera. Ooh! And a vanilla shotgun. Ooh! Just Jonathan for you. Okay, let's see here. Two. No. One place. I actually think I tried it a second ago. Okay. Let's put that ace right there, of course. What else is on here? 
Best thing about it is when it's hovering above the screen, you can like kind of move it around like a mouse. The Q. Which, if that's if this was designed to do like that when you're hovering, that's probably exactly why they did it. One plus one equals two. That kind of stuff. Hyper terminal. Never seen that before. And AT and T mail. Uh, let's just pretend I never opened that. Um, what else on here? Phone dialer, direct cable dial-up, clipboard, character map, calculator system tools. Not much. Pen services. Ooh, handwriting trainer. Maybe we can get it to recognize my handwriting. Welcome to the trainer. In the boxes below, write this word. Pack. P A. C. Write this word. Jugs. You can tell this is from the 20th century time. Because today if some immature kids saw jugs, that probably wouldn't be good. Okay, train. Next word. The. The yeah, train it. Next word, quick. Yeah. That's all capital letters. Brown with commas. Okay, that's enough. That's enough word training. What else is on here? Uh, let's see what the control panel has to say. I wish we could get it to color. But whole computer. And I know that it can only do black and white because I actually read up on the specifications of this thing before I even powered it up. So, <laughs> Well, not the specifications, I mean like, I'd seen the 730TE had a monochrome display, so I automatically assumed this one probably had one. You get what I'm saying. And basically just a bunch of basic settings. Let's look at the system. Microsoft Windows 95 version 4. Register to user. Computer. Oh, this has a 486. Hmm. I was thinking I had a 386 and 16 megs of RAM. Well, then why was the... Oh, I guess it might have had 8 um, megs internal, and then the DRAM makes it 8 megs more. You get what I'm saying? Well, I guess that is all to review about this computer. It is a very rather unique computer. But thank you for watching this all the way through. If you did, I'll see you guys later. Well, you know what? Let's shut it down. Shut down. Bye-bye. And now, I'll see you guys later.